Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. So um, my name is Fjorn Wenzel. I'm part of uh, DB Schenker. And um, yeah, I will talk a bit about uh, how we migrated clouds with uh, zero downtime. And um, at the end, uh, we as Schenker do not only deploy containers, we also ship them. So um, it started at the end with an existing AWS cloud infrastructure we had in place, managed uh, by a subsidiary of Deutsche Bahn. Uh, we had no, not the ability to transfer from an AWS cloud to another AWS cloud or simply an account transfer to another root account or something like this. We had a change in the IP ranges. Yeah, we had a highly restricted environment from a port point of view. Every port has to be requested, dedicated through a firewall. Yeah, so all these shitty things you not, would like to deal with, uh, especially when you're in the middle of a migration and you have a time pressure. Yeah, and for sure, lots of day one operations, which means like, yeah, we tested it, it worked, and uh, yeah, maybe let's go now and uh, get more standardized. So our target setup was in a uh, cloud lending zone uh, that was developed together with a partner company and uh, set up from scratch. For sure, highly automated infrastructure, much larger IP ranges, much more flexible flexibility and uh, dedicated accounts per team because before they were shared and for sure the general rule new is always better. So uh, general considerations uh, we had in mind was for sure we don't trust our network. Yeah? We have a general encrypt everything policy or encryption everywhere policy and uh, we would like to go also with zero downtime migrations yeah? even during business hours or customer times. So. Um, our source environment, we already played a bit like our own service mesh approach or at least the TLS part of it and some kind of observability we got already out of it. So we had in front of our application an Envoy proxy running. This Envoy proxy was configured to take from a secret the SSL certificate and if this certificate changes because we had an operator in place called Vault CRD uh, that fetched from HashiCorp Vault uh, a new certificate when the certificate was near the expiry date. So we fetched a new certificate, placed it in a secret, and when the Envoy detected that there's a new secret in place, it simply performed the hot reload, which was the cool thing. And at the end, an, another application that was running in the same cluster could simply connect to our application via this Envoy proxy, simply had to trust the certificate authority we had in our HashiCorp vault. So this was like our set up before. So we looked a bit around and said like, yeah, what are the potential alternatives or what are the ways that could support us with this cloud migration? So we came up with Istio on the one side, but to be honest, for me, it was very highly complex. It is continuously changing in my opinion. Yeah, uh, at least at this point in time, there was a missing clear governance in my opinion. Console as an alternative was very alpha at this point. Submariner we have not really considered further, but then we came to Linkerd and at the end the approach of the multi-cluster they have is in my opinion quite simple. Yeah, it is based on an Nginx container at the end which acts as a gateway and uh, usual MTLS related topics. So Maybe as a short overview, the Linkerd multi-cluster approach is simply you annotate a service in the target cluster and then there is the Linkerd magic happens with the uh, Linkerd service uh, uh, mirror. This uh, watches on the API, creates a, I call it federated service, so a copy of the service and uh, points this copy of the service to the Linkerd gateway. And when I now talk via a Linkerd enabled application to the federated service, the traffic goes through the Linkerd gateway to my target application. And this is what we at the end utilize simply. So we replaced at the end our application simply with a Linkerd proxy and uh, enabled on the other side on the target account that this service should get mirrored. And the interesting fact out of this is that for my application yeah, that is running on the left side, it was completely transparent that the traffic now goes to the other cluster. Yeah, it has not to care about this. It was simply the request was still arriving with the old approach of the Envoy proxy and then the Linkerd proxy, which was configured to only take up outbound traffic and not inbound traffic, uh, took it up and forwarded the request to the new target application. 
Yeah, we only had to open two ports. As mentioned, we have the topic of firewalls, how to handle firewalls, etc. And final words, because <laughs> it's very fast, uh, it's very short time. So what is definitely needed is a very good monitoring of this, yeah, about the linking. If you run it for a longer period of time, how to handle it is a definitely an interesting question. In general, for sure, a migration not only contains uh, HTTP traffic migration, but it also contains topics like database migrations or Kafka data migration, etc. So these are things that need to be considered. And at the end, what started with a migration topic for us, yeah, we needed a tool for migration, now ends up with our service mess of choice. And what we found out is also very interesting. We, we simply sent a merge request and it was very fastly accepted. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Given that we only have a few minutes to turn around for our next lightning talk,